So in this video we're going to talk about what Grice's theory of implicatures actually was. The details get a bit broke in that there's a lot of talking about maxims, there are a lot of different maxims, but I want to say at the top what the general idea is, because the general idea is actually really simple. And it's something like this. What Grace says is that there are various what he calls maxims that govern conversation. You can think of them as rules or principles or guidelines or something like that. There are these maxims that govern conversation. And implicatures arise when it looks like you're not following the maxims, like you're, what, as he puts it, you're violating the maxims. Whenever we have an implicature, it arises because there's the appearance that somebody is violating the maxims. And the reason Grice thinks we get this additional information communicated is basically because this, the audience, when they, when they hear somebody say something that violates a maxim, they try to explain it away. They think, well, I know that they're at bottom trying to follow the maxims. So if they said something that violated the maxims, they must have good reason to do that. And in particular, they, want, they must be wanting to communicate something and for that reason, they violated the maxims. So you can think of implicatures as a way, the extra information that the audience takes from, from an utterance, that the implicature, is a way to try and explain away the appearance of violating a maxim. It's something the audience takes from the utterance because concluding that that's what the speaker meant would mean that they no longer are violating the maxims. Okay, so that is the sort of big picture idea. We're going to go into the details a bit more. So let's think about these maxims. What are these rules of conversation that Grice is talking about? So he sort of splits it into three different levels. There's kind of a maxim that governs them all and sort of is sort of, I think, supposed to be the source of all of the sub-maxims. Then there are four categories of specific maxims and then a long list of specific rules that we're supposed to follow in conversation. So let's start at the top, talking about the, the maxim that sort of governs them all. And this maxim, Michael, think of it like as a super maxim, is what Grace calls the cooperative principle. Here's how he puts it. The cooperative principle says, make your conversational contribution such as it is required at the stage at which it occurs by the accepted purpose or direction of the talk exchange in which you're engaged. So the basic idea is, well, when you're, convers when you're having a conversation with somebody, be cooperative. Do the things that you're supposed to do, given what you're, what, what you're talking about and what you're trying to do in the conversation at that stage. So the general idea is be cooperative. So let's start with the... So that's the cooperative principle. But what does being cooperative in conversation really mean? Like, what is it, you know, it's all very well and good to say, say that in the abstract, but how do we actually go about being cooperative in conversation? Well, Grace basically thinks that there are kind of four particular kinds of ways or properties that we should think about when we think about being cooperative in conversation. So there are four different categories that we're going to talk about. The first category is what Grice calls quantity. And under each of these categories, there are going to be a list of more specific rules. But basically what quantity says is the quantity, the quantity maxims are about how much information you should share. It's one way of being cooperative is about the quantity of information that you give in your exchanges. And one of the maxims is give all the information required. So one way to be cooperative in conversation is just to say, to give all of the information that the person you're talking to needs to know. Another way to be cooperative with respect to quantity is not to give too much information. But don't give too much. So that's one way to be co cooperative in conversation that falls under the quantity category. It's all about the quantity of information you give. You give all that's required and don't say more than people want to know. Another category he calls quality. When I think of quality, 
as being about sort of the quality of the information that you give. And again, these are sort of rather obvious sort of principles that are going to fall under this. So one of them is don't say things you think are false. If you think about it, again, that sort of makes sense as a way of being cooperative in conversation. Saying false things to people, or saying things that you know to be false, or whether you don't you don't know whether they're true or not, that's not a particularly that's not being particularly cooperative in conversation. The second one is related. It's don't say things you lack evidence for. So obviously one way to be uncooperative with respect to the quality of your information is to say things you know are false. A different way to be uncooperative is, is to say things that you lack evidence for, that you've no, no good reason to think that they obtain. If you think about it, being cooperative in a conversation does seem to involve both of these things. Avoiding saying things that are false and avoiding saying things that you lack evidence for. The third category is what Guy Grice calls relation. The idea of relation is sort of like what's the relation between what you've said and everything in the background and what's gone before. And here the maxim is kind of pretty punchy, it's be relevant. So part of being cooperative in conversation involves saying things that are relevant to the topic at hand. If you go off and start saying irrelevant things, like for having a conversation about your paper topics and somebody starts going off and talking about the weather, they're not being cooperative because they're, what they're talking about is not relevant to the topic at hand. So that's the only relation maxim. And the last kind of category is what Grice calls manner. Manner is unlike the other ones because all of the other ones are about what the content of what you say. So quantity is about how much information does what you literally say contain? Is it everything you need? Is it too much? Is it not enough? Quality is about whether that information is true or false, or it's something you have justification for. Relation is about what's the relationship between the information you're conveying and the conversation at large. But matter is more about the method or the medium you choose to communicate it. It's all about the, the phraseology and the particular words you use. And here there are four sub-maxims. So one is, don't be obscure. Or put differently, try to be clear. Don't. Uh, one way to be cooperative in speech is to say things in as clear a way as you possibly can. Not doing that is obviously a way of being uncooperative. Another is avoid ambiguity. The idea here is, well, you should, when you when you say something, you should try and not say things that could be taken in more than one way. That's uncooperative because the, the, your audience doesn't know what to conclude from what you said if you say something ambiguous. We also have the other maxim of be brief, and we have the final maxim of be orderly. And these are kind of relatively straightforward. So be brief is like don't go on at length unnecessarily. Price sort of humorously puts a avoid unnecessary prolixity. And then the last one, be orderly, is you know, present your you know, when you're when you're talking, present the information in a way that people can follow. So these under each of the categories are all the sub-maxims. We have maxims about quantity, about how much information you should give, quality, what's the quality of that information, relation, how does the information you convey, how does it relate to the conversation at large? and manner, which is all about the way in which you communicate the information rather than the particular content of the information. And the justification for thinking that all of these maxims govern conversation is supposed to be that, well, in general, there's this general rule or general maxim that we're all supposed to be following, which says be cooperative. And these are all different ways of being cooperative. To put it differently, to fail to follow any of these maxims not doing what any, if you took some one of these maxims and you didn't do what it's what it said, that would be a way of being uncooperative. 
So in this way, with this super maxim of being cooperative, all these specific principles, all these specific ways of conducting yourself in conversation are supposed to follow from it. So this is Grice's picture of the maxim. So we have the cooperative principle, which bottoms out in all these specific directives about how we should behave ourselves in conversation. So we'll take a break now, and in the next video, we're going to actually see how he uses these to explain how implication works, how implicatures work.